Hey, what's up, everybody? JC, Everyday Thoughts is in the building. Uh, special guest for me tonight, Mr. Mario, Mr. Ma Mr. K112 himself. Everybody gather around. Hope everybody's having a good, blessed evening. And tonight's topic is do men and women actually want to go back to traditional times? So, waiting on my co host. Hope everybody had a great day. What's going on, Denise? What's going on, Mario? What's going on, Miss Covington? <laughs> What's going on, brother? Good, brother. What's going on with you? I'm good, man. I'm good. You are, you you trying to do that late night thing? <laughs> you said what? I said you doing that late night thing? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> How's your day, man? Pretty good, man. Not too bad, man. Got a couple things uh, accomplished, so you know it's always. It's always good to, to be able to do that. What about you? That was all right. It was good. Um, we have to introduce everybody. What you about? All that good stuff, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what it is, you should know who it is. It's Mr. KTU101. Catch me on all social media platforms. Love to have the hard conversation. So if you're ever in the area, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, just hit me up. Mr. KTU101. Okay, so tonight's topic is do men and women actually want to go back to traditional times? And um, I feel like yes and no. I feel like a lot of men and women claim they want to be, you know, they want to live back in the 1920s or living back in the days with their great great grandparents. But in today's in today's society, I really don't think a lot of men really or women really have that type of mindset to, you know, take care of the home and take care of all the bills too. You know, what's your take on it? Okay, so when we say traditional times, like for some people, they may feel like the 60s are traditional times. So what era are we going to actually cover? Like we going back to slavery? We going back to the civil rights movement? Like what, what era do you actually want to cover that night? I mean, we can go back to like the early 1920s, 1930s, you know. A lot, a lot of people, they like to compare, you know, oh, back in my grandfather's day, you know, he paid all the bills or back in my you know, grandmother's day, she, she took care of the home, you know, but nowadays you see a lot of brothers talking about 50-50, equal rights, et cetera, you know, so what's your take on that? Okay, well, I mean, when we, we break down traditionally, uh, the, the breakdown of the culture in reference to African Americans, um, yes, back in the day, traditionally, there were black men in the home. Um, however, those black men, they, uh, they worked, they weren't, they were, were not CEOs. They were not like anything on any type of Fortune 500 type company. You know, they were maybe mailmen. They worked in a factory, uh, they postal services or whatever the case may be. Good jobs, but nothing big, nothing to get their family, you know what I'm saying, to that moving on up status or whatever case be. Of course, women stayed at home to cut their kids or whatever case be, sent them off to school. Um, so when you say back in the traditional days, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, today's woman, um, I don't personally feel like the back in the day concept will work now based on all of the exposure, based on the fact that women are traveling now, women are CEOs now, women are not only taking care of the household, sending kids to school, they're going off to their own businesses and doing what they need to do. So I think that women in today's society are way more empowered based on society and, and what they what, what what they have to deal with because of all of the information. Women today have a lot more information than they did back in traditional times. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with you in that, that aspect. I do feel like a lot of women, they are being strong, they are independent, they are taking care of themselves. And a lot of times, a lot of brothers, we, we kind of um, we kind of shift, like we kind of weaken ourselves because it's like a lot of brothers, we kind of like emasculate ourselves. And a lot of times, we're not really being the head of the household that we claim that we want to, the title that we claim that we want to be, you know, we talk, because it, it, it comes up, it, it pays a cost to be the boss. Like I said in the previous post I made, you know, we want to talk about we heads and kings, but it comes down to the bills. We're talking about 
oh, 50 50, you know, equal rights, equal rights, you know. So, you know, I don't really understand that concept. Well, I, here, here's my thing. So, I, I noticed that you said 50 50. So, here's my thing. Um, first of all, you know what I'm saying? If you get a man, ladies, if you get a man that is willing to foot the bills, all the bills, and you just collect your check and you do what it is that you do, kudos, congratulations. That's that's great for you. But if you get a man that says, hey, look, I'm going to cover the rent and you cover the utilities, you know what I'm saying? Then cool, that's great too. But I don't think that a woman should look down on a man if he says, okay, well, yes, I'm going to cover this and you cover this. That's what being a partner is. That's what being a team player is. You cover your you cover your half and I cover my half. So I think that any man that says, I'm going to foot all the bills, kudos, congratulations. Make sure you find a woman that does that. But I'm going to be honest with you. I've just been privy to, I guess, dealing with women who understand that, okay, you work for your money like I work for my money, and there's no need for you to go in your pocket and your bank account every single time. I'm going to cover these things so that way it is not a burden on you. Yeah, I feel you like that, but at the end of the day, it's like women still having to go out here and work, still have to take care of themselves. It's like the men are still um, defeminized and still not being equal. She still have to go out there, cook, clean like a man, work like a man, eight, ten hours, still have to come home, cater to the family, the kids, etc. And it's like, like who really relieves her? You know, that not a lot of men think of it, think of it that way. Because a lot of men, we go out there, we work eight, ten hours, and that's it. We feel like the job is done, you know. What's your take on that? Um, I think it depends on what Individual. you're looking for in a relationship. Okay. I think nowadays, if you want a woman that their only responsibility is being at home, taking care of the kids, and the house is their job, then fine. But if you want a woman who's ambitious, who who's courageous enough to go out there and say, I'm either going to work in another company, start my own business, or I'm going to be doing things outside the household. It all depends on what type of relationship you're looking for. If you're looking for a woman that's proactive and that's that's active in a community or that lives a lifestyle where she's actively traveling or whatever, then she's not going to be comfortable staying at home. She's not going to be comfortable playing the role of I'm just a mom and I'm just sending them to school and taking care of the house waiting for my man to return. No, a lot of women want to say, hey, bro, I'm just I'm just as good as you are. We in this thing 50-50, let's rock out. Don't treat me less with less value and say, I'm only good enough to raise the kids and I'm only good enough to clean the house. A lot of women won't, a lot of women will give you pushback for that. A lot of successful women will give you pushback for that. Unless they're just ready to be in some type of retired status. Yeah, I do, I do agree with you on that aspect. But a lot of women, like I said, they really don't have no choice but to go out there and work and, you know, work 18 hours a day, you know. And uh, my auntie, she said something about, you know, a lot of times these brothers, he's looking for roommates and not looking for that provider mentality. You know, he still, he still want to be, her respect you as the head, but you still talking about 50-50. Like, you know, it don't go that way. Like I said, it costs to, pay, it costs to be the Okay, boss. so so here's, here tonight, ladies, you're going to see me go head to head with JC. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. What, what her name is? Carolyn? Listen, let me tell you something. OK, if you think a man that comes to you and says, OK, hey, we're together now, we're we, we moving in, we're doing a damn thing. I'm going I'm to cover the rent. Right. You cover the utilities. If you think I'm living with a roommate, then cool. That's on you. That's your thought process. You're entitled to that. I'm saying, first of all, there's not a lot of men that's going to say I'm going to pay the rent and you pay the utilities. They ain't going to pay the rent. They ain't going to pay the utilities. They ain't going to have a job. They ain't going to be able to communicate. So that whole thing about what they will do versus what they don't do, if you find a man that, again, is in a position to foot all the bills, to foot all the bills, then kudos to you. However, ladies, okay, I'm talking to the average people. If you find someone who's equally educated, Hey, you might be a GM at, uh, let's not even say GM. We're going average, right? Let's say you're a manager at, at Walmart. He's a manager at Kmart, right? You guys are probably getting equal pay salaries or whatever it has to be. For that man to say, I'm going to put all the bills and my lady just has to stack and save. To me, I think that you're delusional. I think you're <laughs> delusional if you think that it's okay 
that's like me telling my daughters, oh, a man is going to pay your way. You don't worry about it. No, because when he dies, what happens? You're not used to paying bills. You're used to somebody taking care of you. Isn't that what we see a lot on social media? And that's why I said that's great about reality TV shows. We see a lot of women being taken care of. So as soon as that man is not able to provide or he dies or he goes to jail, what does that woman do? She now jumps in another unsuccessful relationship because she's so used to being taken care of instead of being able to take care of herself. Somebody talk to me. Yeah, but I mean, I just feel like a lot of brothers, we got to make sure that we can provide for ourselves a lot. A lot of times, you got to see a lot of women taking care of grown men. So it's like, you know, why you out here trying to pursue women? You can't really take care of yourself, you know? What sense does that make, you know? Okay. So Carolyn says, hey, I guess I'm not average. Again, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But for, for everybody else that feels that, you know what, either I'm average, a little above average, I'm saying I think this is a lot of a, – a, a lot – an uh, issue in our communities when you have a woman, you meet a woman that says, I expect you to pay all the bills. Me personally, let's say we're we, we going out for a lunch date and you sit in front of me and say, well, you know if you dated me, I'm expecting you to pay for everything. I'm expecting you, if we move in together, not only to pay the first month rent and a down payment, but every month's rent. All the utilities on top of whining and dining me, on top of spoiling me, on top of paying trips. Well, my thing about it is a lot of the women that ask you to do that, they're not in a position to do it for themselves. Huh? They're not in a position to do it for themselves, but they want a man to do it for them. So what happened to equal opportunity? What happened to being a woman of, of not only standards and principles, but also being a woman that can provide and do for herself? Because if you're looking for a man to do that, then to me, you're looking for a cash cow, a cash cow or a sugar daddy. And if you're looking for those things, then those things should be set up front. That's not necessarily a man because he puts all the bills. He puts the bills as primary. The wife maybe or girlfriend maybe handles the other supplementary bills, but together you work as a team collectively. Yeah, but I understand you're talking about teamwork, but like I said, then you're just be, you're just really asking to be roommates with each other, you know. You're not trying to be that so invited for her. Hey, bro, let's stop the bullshit. I don't know, Carolyn, I don't know if she high over there. I don't know what she's doing right now, okay? But I think she just I think she's trying to work me right now. Listen, if Carolyn wants that in a man, then that's what she's gonna seek in a man, and that's fine. As long as she's up front with that man and saying, I'm expecting you to pay all the bills. I'm not paying for nothing. If she finds a man that's willing to go with that, kudos to you. Salute to that, sister. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that the educated black man that's around me, the alpha males that's around me, you paying for something. Because my thing about it is we ain't dealing with no groupies. We ain't dealing with no Instagram models. We dealing with real women that handle everyday life. And everyday life means if you're not willing to support the household, then you're out there trying to do something else. That means you're going to look for the next sugar daddy. You're going to look. It's all about a money thing. It's not about the love. About, it's all about the money. About, the thing about it is her taking care of the home is a full-time job 24-7. You know, you're just thinking you're going out there working 8 to 10 hours, but her job is, is not you're never ending. She don't have a a time in, time out, time. She clock in, clock out. She always have to be on call at all times of the night. Okay. So, you, hey, listen, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the Carolyn thing is, is, is highlighted. I consider myself to be an alpha male. And when you say alpha, alpha men provide for their families, you damn skippy. You damn skippy. They provide, they protect, they're role models. However, that doesn't mean you need to foot the bill for everything. And that is a misconception that we can we can go ahead and break that right now. That doesn't mean you foot the bill for everything. That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean to say, okay, you go to work, I go to work. You don't spend none of your money, but I spend all of my money trying to do everything in the household. No, that's not realistic. However, if you find a man that works in a Fortune 500 company, he's the CEO. He makes two to three times your salary, and he can afford to do those things, then great. The issue that, the issue is that when you find women that want a man to fit the bill for everything, nine times out of ten, those women can't do the same thing for you. They can't do the same thing for you. That means they can't do for you what you what they are asking you to do for them. 
And to me, that's lopsided. Somebody talk to me. I mean, like I said, it still, it still don't make any sense because you, you're trying to have, put more pressure on her. You know, like I said, you want to sit there and work eight, ten hours a job, come home, tend to the kids. It's, it doesn't, it's not fair. It's, not, it's too much pressure on her. You're supposed to come from like. What pressure is on, what, wait, 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 wait. What pressure is on her, JC? I'm saying what, the, what? the pressure of her working and then taking care of the kids. No, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm not saying, understand this, understand this. There's a two point to this. If a woman stays home and her her sole job, she's chosen, or you as a couple have chosen, okay, she's going to stay home and take care of the kids. She's going to stay home and take care of the household. She's going to cook and clean or whatever. Then if the man is the only one that goes to work, of course, duh, the man is going to handle the bills. But if you both work and you both share the responsibility for taking care of the kids, for taking care of the household, then there's no need for just the man to put all the bills. That's what I'm saying. Okay, well, we agree to disagree. <laughs> well, yeah, but let, let's talk about dating, you know, as far as, you know, dating back then was, was about purpose, it was about courtship, as far as getting married, you know, and nowadays it's kind of like dating just, you know, free for all. You're dating whoever you want to date, Date this person today, tomorrow you're with somebody else. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, say it again, man. I was reading the comments, brother. Say say what you no, said again. No, 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 I was just saying, I was saying like dating nowadays as opposed to like back then. Back then it was more of a purpose. You actually had to get to know that person, you actually had to get the father's permission to go out there and date his daughter, etc. So, you know, compare that to today's dating, you know. Man, hey, hey, listen, brother. Uh, first of all, dating back in the day was a, a lot more respectful. A lot more respectful. I think that when men went to go pick, or oh, young boys went to go pick up uh, girls at their house, you know, some of those guys was like, "Oh shit, I gotta meet the parents," you know, and it was it was nervous. It was it was it was old. Oh, let me make sure, you know, I button up my shirt and I'm yes sir, no ma'am. I'm respectful. I'm respectful. I'm doing all of the right things. Today, bro, you you pull up, you go to the house. The mama trying to get with the the, the dude. She half naked. Ain't no daddy around. Kids run. I mean, it's 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 the 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 balance has shifted. The level of respect in dating now, it's all about you know the who's who. It's all about what can I get in a, in a short term. A lot of people are not thinking long term. A lot of people, no one. When you go to someone's house right now, it's it's not. It's very few fathers in the household. First of all, but if those fathers are in the household, are they really saying, "Are you serious about my daughter?" Hey. Who knows? Maybe the girl is going to pick up the boy. Are you serious about my son? No, there is no parental interaction. Everybody's just winging it. Everybody's just winging it. Everybody's just going off of what they've seen either on social media or what they heard is the right thing to do. I think back in the day, traditionally, I think that parents were involved. They knew you was going to pick up uh, a Martha Sue. They knew they knew you was going over there and they wanted you to be prepared. So they ran you through the gauntlet of asking you questions. Make sure you say X, Y, and Z. Yes, sir, no, ma'am, et cetera. And then once you got to their house, to that young lady's house, their parents ran you through the gauntlet. You know what I'm saying? And they asked you, hey, make sure you be back in, in time. Where y'all going? How much money do you get? What's your intentions with my child? So I think it was more conversation back in the day. I don't think a lot of conversation is being had right now. Yeah, I mean, I do agree with that. Uh, I do feel like a lot of, a lot of people like nowadays it's just all about something casual. But a lot of times it needs to be something intentional. Not, not a lot of men have that purpose. Okay, that drive. Okay, I want to take care, take care of home, take care of you, etc. It's more like you go pay fifty fifty. You just pay most of the bills, and I just you know pay half. God damn, just, JC, JC, stop doing that, man. You pissing me off, JC. Ladies, y'all stop answering to JC. Y'all, I'm, I'm getting tired of this shit. <laughs> Listen, when, when it comes to dating, dating is different than you actually being in the home living with someone. That's two I'm just totally saying, different I'm dating, I mean, just Netflix and chill. I don't know what that's all about. Like, who said you Netflix? You actually had to go to night restaurants. You actually had to look up, you know, nice places, etc. Now it's just something just casual. Let's go to, um, you know, American Dallas. Let's go to the Wing Stop. Like, what, where, where's the a real romance? Well, you gotta understand. Okay, so you said where's the romance? Our society doesn't promote romance. Our, our society doesn't 
it doesn't promote anything that is building a foundation. Our society is an instant society. You know what I mean? People want it now. You understand what I'm saying? They want you to be the babe now. They want you to be the white feet now. All of the titles, all of the privileges, it's now. We don't take the time to get to know each other. That's why when you talk about dating, bro, what's it? If, if you're going to get the same privileges you get from a marriage in the first part of your meeting someone, that means I meet you, I have sex with you within 24 to 48 hours, right? Within 24 to 48 hours, you calling me bae, you calling me boo, you calling me wifey, you calling me husby, hubby, whatever. If I'm going to get the same thing, why marry you? Well, I marry you. It makes no sense. If I'm going to get the same perks, you're going to let me come over anytime I want. You're going to cook You gonna cook meals for me. You're going to bail me out of jail. You're going to give me money. If you're going to do these things and you don't, and, and I haven't known you for a long time, I haven't worked for anything, then what's the purpose of marriage? What's the purpose of marriage? There's no, there's no purpose because guess what? Just like, just like, I think that's what, Jess, Jesse, Jesse, it's instant. It's a microwave instant moment. I'm going to do this for now. There's no one saying, you know what? I'm going to take my time and I'm going to water this and let it blossom and grow into something. That's what I miss about the traditional days based on what I know. People took their time to get to know each other. It wasn't, it wasn't such a rush process, but today everything is instant. All right. We were so we were Sonya said, bro. See, that's why I mess with her. So she only got my back. Read, read what she said, bro. Oh, I can read it. No. <laughs> or I go. What the hell that? <laughs> Not what she said. She said, men expect a lot. They want you to work, come home, cook, take care of the kids, do the extra while they come home and prop their feet up. <laughs> yeah, because okay. they're tired from working all day, but the woman's not. That's what I was saying okay. earlier. Um... Sonia, Sonia Moore, you're exactly right. Um, some men are very selfish. Some men are very inconsiderate. Some men are very irresponsible. And some men lack the knowledge and the know-how to be in a solid, beneficial relationship. So you're exactly right. And there's a lot of women on here right now commenting. You're exactly right. However, when you find those men, all right, that are rational, that can communicate, that understand the value of being in a relationship. Certain rules don't apply, okay? Certain rules don't apply. That means if you worked all day and I worked all day, I don't expect you to come home and cook. We probably eating out. You understand what I'm saying? We probably gonna order in. It's just certain things that go, that go with the narrative. I think a lot of women, they've been in situations where they've had a no good man and that no good man has set this, this this platform or this stigma for a lot of men. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of women think the way they think right now. Yeah. But now, like I said, we just got to do a better job as far as just dating and courtship with a purpose. A lot of times we just, you know, we're just dating just to be dating, just to have fun. You know, let's have, you know, more men date with a purpose, you know, trying to settle down, trying to commit, you know. I'm tired of, you know, hearing a lot of what we're talking about, you know, why is courtship dead? Why don't dudes want to go out and uh, take, me, take me out to a nice restaurant? So, like, why why you think courtship is dead? So, JC, Sonia just said, if we're going to go half, let's go half on everything, not just the bills. You exactly goddamn right. Let's go half on being energetic when it comes to sex. Let's go half on thinking outside the box when it's time to travel. Let's go half on having communication and promoting positive feedback. Let's go half on being great parents if we have children in, in reference to being great role models. Let's go half with communicate for communication skills and giving positive feedback. Let's go half with 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 um, thinking outside the box in our relationship and keeping everything spont uh, um, spontaneous and fun. Let's go half. If you want to go half, go half. And the problem is, is that a lot of women expect men to say, you know what, you got that. I want you to look at Pornhub and I want you to learn some new moves while I lay on my back. Right? 
You want you want men to say, I want you to watch all of Pornhub and wait for Pornhub 2 to come out <laughs> so you can learn some new moves. But while you while you watching that, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna roll my hair and I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch Atlanta Housewives. Yeah, let's go half. Let's go half. You exactly right. The same expectation that you put on your man. One, can you do those things yourself by yourself? Two, are you willing to say, you know what? As long as this man is respectful, as long as this man handles his business, I'm going to be submissive to his lead. Being submissive to his lead is not downgrading you as a woman. So that should never happen. But two, are you expecting your man to handle all bills and you stack your money? To me, I think that's ludicrous. I think that's ludicrous, especially if you're dealing with someone and you're on an average level. Now, if this man is making buku money, then y'all, y'all, y'all need to talk about that. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't agree with that. I feel like you're the man. You supposed to make sure, make sure you pay all the bills and stuff. You know, what's what say? time going to is. What does David say? Saying? She said bull crap. Women are more freakier than men. Look my face. You could be more freakier than men all you want to. I'm telling you right now. If you're just going to lay on your back, then, I mean, it's, it's a lot of people who do that. It, you can't tell me there's no boring women out there. Huh? You can't tell me that there's no women that says, oh, well, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give head. I don't do this. I don't do that. Just like there's some men that says, oh, I don't give head. And I don't do this and I don't do that. What I'm saying is the same expectations that you have for your man, make sure if you're going half on everything, you go half on the same expectations with your woman. That means it's up to you as well to keep things spicy. It's up to you as well to communicate. It's up to you as well to have a positive attitude. If we can go equal, let's go equal. If you can't handle something, I'll handle it, no problem. But don't expect me to handle everything. <laughs> Mom, look, 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 look. Need to, yeah. hey, some of y'all need to date JC because JC is going to foot the bill for everything. Like I said, it's supposed to, it to be the All ball. Life, how you going to be... How you trying to be the You talking about going 50-50 with your girl or your wife? You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. What the macarena? Is that how you do it? How you do the macarena, JC? <laughs> how you trying to be the head? You talking about going 50 with your girl your wife and stuff, you know? Exactly. Marlon says there's chicks that lay on their back talking about I'm a freak. Exactly. Here's the thing. Stop putting titles on people. People love to grab titles. Oh, yeah, I'm a freak. You can't even spell freak. First of all, you scared to watch a, a porno. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Like, like, let, let, let's be real. Everybody that grabs titles and promotes titles, sometimes it's not about titles. It's about showing and telling. You know what I'm saying? It's about showing and telling. And if you ain't showing and telling, stop speaking. Stop speaking. All right? A lot of people are expecting a lot of men, and I get it. You know, it's 2019 going into 2020. Everybody wants a good man, right? Everybody wants somebody that's solid, that's respectable, that's God-fearing, that cares about his family. I get that. But you got to understand that there are some women out there, they're lazy and full of shit. They're lazy and full of shit. So here's the thing. I'm not going to be a good man for a full of shit woman and vice versa. A good woman shouldn't be a good woman for a full of shit man. That's why you have to have the hard conversations up front. If you're a woman, you got to tell that man, I expect you to pay all my bills. Instead of finding out after you gave him the kitty cat, right, in a week or 24 hours, I want you to be my man, and I expect you to pay all the bills. Nope. You shit the game in the kitty cat. See you when I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, saying, bro. Talk to me, man. Talk to Plain me. said, most women are the head of the household anyway, so a man has to bring more than just money to the table. Who said that? Yeah. Uh, Sonya. That's what she said. She said, most women are the head of the household anyway. Yeah. Um. Um, Sonia, let me say this to you real quick. Most of the men you date, most of the men you know about, you know what I'm saying? Most of the men you deal with. If most women are the head of the household, you got to ask yourself, are these just the men they date? 
are these just the men that they deal with or just the men that they heard about? Because either it's 50-50 or the woman runs the house because the woman has decided or they have decided as a couple, it is best for someone to be at home with the kids and it is best for you as the breadwinner, the primary breadwinner, to go out and win the prize and bring it home. Bring home the bacon, as to say. So if you guys, whatever works for you as a couple and as a team, if you decide this is what work, works best for us, then do that. Don't let society and don't let Mario and JC tell you what's wrong and right. You decide for yourself what works better. I'm just telling you realistically, for you to find a man to foot all the bills, what's the difference... What's the difference in that man saying, well, if I pay all your bills, right, I pay for you to get your hair done, nails done, everything done, done, right? I'm paying the cable. I'm paying the lights. I'm paying the gas. I'm paying the, uh, 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 the, the, the rent. Why can't I do that for somebody else, too? Since my money long, why can't I just go out there and get somebody else to do the same thing? Understand that men respect women that bring something to the table just like women respect men who bring something to the table. If you're just laying on your back, not being spontaneous in reference to sex and in reference to good communication, positive attitude and all that stuff, you expect a man to say, I'm head over heels for this woman that I'm paying for and to stay with you and be faithful. Then I'm telling you right now, that you should stop watching them reality TV shows and maybe, just maybe, take a couple classes in reference to how the human brain thinks. Because I'm telling you, that man will, if he is, if he does stay with you, he's going to be cheating on you. If he has to put the bill for everything, I'm telling you. I mean, you shouldn't have to revert to cheating. I don't think a man need to go out there and sit there and cheat on his wife. I mean, like I said, that's what, he, that's what, that's what he agreed to. You're paying all the bills and stuff. That's what he needs to be doing. But it all depends on... Yeah. He's going to pay the bills. He's going to pay the bills for you, but he's also going to be paying the bills for his side chick. I'm, I'm telling you, if you say, I expect you to pay all my bills, if you come at that man like you're a groupie, if you come at, at that man like you're all about materialistic things, if you come at that man like you're using him as a cash cow, using him as a sugar daddy, he's going to treat you like one, ladies. He's going to treat you like one. That's like if a man walk up to you and smack you on your ass. If he treats you like a piece of meat from the jump, it's not going to get better with time. I can, I can change him. No, you ain't going to change him. You're not going to change him. He's going to be the same way he was from the jump, just like women. They're going to be the same way. So if they expect you to foot all my bills from the jump, cool, I'll foot all your bills. But here's what's going to happen. The level of respect that needs to be there for him footing your bills is not going to be there. Mario, talk Most to these women. They pay for their own bills. They only they pay for. They've been doing everything for themselves for the longest. So what are you really adding to her life? She's been doing everything for herself. What are you really adding to her life? Well, here's the thing, JC. Um, first of all, what the hell are you? What what the hell is a woman adding to my life if I'm paying all the bills for me? JC is going to be the advocator for the ladies, and I'm going to be the advocator for the men. If, if you meet a man right now, ladies and gentlemen, right? You meet a man, the man and the woman, both of y'all educated, right? Both of y'all are in pretty good physical condition. Both of y'all are spiritual. Both of y'all have a positive attitude. Both of y'all have, let's just say, $25,000 saved up. Let's say that you have a minimum credit score of $650 apiece. We're even. We're even. We have our own apartment, two bedroom, a two bedroom or whatever case be, and we have a car. That's pretty decent, right? We are even. We're even. So let me ask you a question. When I meet you, what exactly do what the what do I need to bring to the table? I want JC to answer that. What what more do I need to bring to the table? If we're equal, what do I need to bring to the table, JC? I mean, you have to you have to prove to her that you that, you, that you're that dude. Because like, what are you really adding to this woman's life? Like, why are you bothering this woman coming to this woman's town? Man? Give me a gun. I need a gun so I can shoot JC in the face. Uh, oh, I want to shoot JC in the face. Let me. Men do not have to prove anything to a woman. 
Just well, like a woman doesn't have to prove anything to a man. If you have what you have and I have what you have, guess what? That's a partnership. That's us sitting down and we're actually saying, okay, this is who I am. This is who I am. Boom. We, we, we talk as equals. We don't talk as let me sell myself. That's the problem. Men get caught up trying to sell themselves. You don't have to sell yourself. A woman knows less than five minutes if she wants to deal with you. Less than five. She, she, she knows if she wants to deal with you in less than five minutes. So there's nothing to sell. Be yourself. Be yourself. I think we get caught up on that. We're trying to sell ourselves and promote something. So it's like, oh, well, look at my car. You know, literally, look at my bank account. Literally, I mean, it's... You take the sincerity out of the situation when you're trying to sell or promote something. Be yourself. Be yourself. Let them decide if they want to deal with you. Let them decide if you're worthy of their time. If you're worthy of their time, they'll give you their time. But when you're trying to sell something, look at all the money I got. Well, listen, jackass, if a man, if you're a jackass and you decide, oh, I'm a man, right? I'm a sell that I got all this money. Then if she decides to say, I'm going to deal with you, but only for your money. Only for your money. Then I wouldn't be mad at a woman saying, well, I just, I wanted him to pay everything since he was flaunting his money around. No. If you're trying to build a foundation, you don't build it based on monetary value. Somebody talk to me, goddammit. But like I said, most of the, like I said, most of the women they've been doing for themselves is like, what are you, like I said, what, again, what are you adding to this woman's life? What are you bringing to her life? <laughs> You don't want what to go out to her life. Her. What are you really bringing to her life, though? Companionship. Companionship. That's what she. We're bringing that to each other's lives. Isn't that the reason why people get in a relationship? Companionship. You 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 you're tired of holding that pillow. You're tired of drinking that wine and listening to that damn jazz music, falling asleep in the tub and and, and wetting your damn eyelashes up. Companionship. You tired of playing with that damn vibrator? Oh, goddamn, this rabbit. Oh, shit, pour it up. Companionship. Human touch. Some shoulders to cry on. Companionship. That's the problem. We, we, we feel like someone needs to bring this spark to our lives. You can be happy with your damn self. You can be happy, but if you find someone that actually you can have a conversation with, you can actually bounce your goals off and ideas and they can actually give you some feedback that makes you feel good about yourself, that's wonderful. You don't get that talking to yourself. You want to hear someone else's dialogue or dialect is telling you, yeah, that is a good idea. Or, you know, maybe you should think about it like this. Or maybe you had a badass day and you just want somebody to talk to. Come on, ladies. I know I know somebody, somebody hearing something. Come on now. Everybody can't okay. disagree. Somebody said, <laughs> I can't <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sonia said, being, um, bring character value, bring honesty, bring some skills, how to paint, plumb, skill, cooking, accounting skills, or something, bring excitement, fun, and something different besides money. So basically, you know, like, that's what I'm saying. Can you be a helpmate? Can you make sure you, that, her, that her house is maintained? Does she have to call another man to fix her tire? Does she have to call another man to get damage on her car? Or damage within the home. Like, if she has to keep calling another man, then what is she using you for? Like, why is she with you, though? I, I, think, I think we're getting, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, ladies, this is what I notice when you have these open topics. A lot of people speak on the failure of a man. Maybe I'm too optimistic, but my, my, my concept is that the man is in a household or the man is dating you doing what they're supposed to do. So there is no need. A man, a man will not allow you to have to call another man to handle anything if he's handling his responsibilities. So that's not the conversation that we're having right now. So to throw that into the mix, it's like, okay, let me throw this monkey wrench in there to kind of disembobulate everything that's going on. I'm saying that you and the man that you've just met are equals. Equal job, e equal education, equal savings. You, you're even equal with going to church every Sunday. You may be equal in the amount of kids that you have. Someone asked, which was JC, what does that man bring to your life? And I said right down the middle, companionship. 
To me, if you are equal and you guys are vibing and you're doing things and that man makes you happy, that is priceless. It is priceless to have someone standing in the audience. It is priceless to have someone waking up to. It is priceless to have someone that you can bounce your goals or any type of thought process that you have off of someone that is there. That is priceless. That is what that man brings to you because you already have the things that you need. You're not with him for finances. You're not with him because of credit. You're not with him because he drives a nice car or live in a nice home. You're with him because it's a companion, someone that's equal, a partner, someone you can respect and vice versa. Somebody talk to me. I mean, basically, you basically tell women to sit there and settle just to have a man by the best side. It doesn't really add any kind of value to our life. You know, that's basically what you're saying. Um, Jamie says, but when <laughs> Jamie stop. But when you when when you call a repair man and the bill comes, is he going to expect half of the cost? Um, I don't think I don't I don't think so. Um, good point though. So let's harp on that because I don't want to ignore your questions. Um, when I say a man is a man, that means if you as a woman identify there's something wrong in a household, nine times out of ten, he's gonna take care of that. Nine times out of ten, I'm talking about the the reoccurring bills that happen on a monthly basis, so that way you guys can budget. I know I'm talking to some educated people right now. So we understand exactly what I'm saying if you budget every month. That means if I know money's coming out for the rent, I'm budgeting for that. If I know a certain amount of utilities is coming out, then I'm budgeting for that. The unexpected things, like if the sink breaks or toilet breaks or whatever, if those things come up, nine times out of ten, the man is going to pay for that based on what's going on or whatever case be. So that's that's that it should be talked about, but it shouldn't be as big. It shouldn't be as big. We budget, successful people budget. Okay, successful people budget. So if you're budgeting for certain things, it's okay to say, okay, well, I'm gonna cover this, you cover that. And then we'll meet down the middle if something happens that, you know, just unexpected or whatever the case may be. However, the man nine times out of 10 is going to cover the cost. Now for those women that deal with men that don't do that, then again, you pick that man. You pick them. He said he picked them. Well, like I said, I mean that's what that's the type of dude that we trying to approach these women though. These brothers that don't have a vision, don't have any kind of goal, or aspiration. So, you know, we have to do a better job as men to be better choices for them to choose from. Um, I think her name is Tanisha. She said Mario enjoys talking to himself. Am I talking to myself, JC? Like, what's going on, brother? Like, what's, what's, what's going on, man? I, I was trying to. I can't. I'm not reading all the comments. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm seeing some comments. But JC, you know, he's a he's actually moderating this. So whatever questions come up, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll he'll, he'll bring up. Okay, Sonya said. Justice said, a real man will be a man and do what is needed for the woman in a relationship. Marriage is coming together as one and making sure the home is taken care of. Yeah, I do agree with that. You know. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that's exactly what we're saying. So more is all about money. How how so? Let's let's stop for a second. Let's y y Yolanda explain that. What what does that mean? What? Ms. <laughs> Watts said, the bill should be split. You should help each other grow financially. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, that works. I mean, I think that, again, you know, uh, like I was saying, prior to even getting together and moving in and deciding to do that, you guys just have to have a conversation and see what's the best logical thing to do. You know, is, is his place better? Is your place better? Do you want to say, okay, both of our places are too small for, for to, to, to build with, so let's move into another place. You got to decide what's best for you and your relationship. That, I mean, that, that's really what it boils down to. But if you hear something here that makes you say, okay, I wasn't thinking about that, and that's that's a good point, then that's great. That's what these conversations are about. <laughs> Marlon said, he's just going to hate you after this live. <laughs> oh, I already got a woman, so I'm not... <laughs> I'm not worrying about that. However, I'm I'm hoping that something I say, you know what I'm saying, it makes sense. Because if you think if you think about it, 
the average person that women meet, they're not in a position to carry themselves and carry the woman. So nine times out of 10, when you say, okay, well, I'm meeting this man and he has his stuff together. Let's say he pays his bills, he pays his rent, he pays all the things he's supposed to do, right? That doesn't mean he's in a position to be able to carry you as well. But does that not, is he not a man because he can't carry you? Is he not a good man because he can't afford your bills as well? So that's why I said for those women that feel like it's unrealistic to say, I can meet him halfway. That's not a problem. And, and that's what I'm trying to do for those women that say, you know what, I'm on the fence right now. Should he pay all my bills or should I help him out? I'm telling you right now as a man, it's okay to say, I'm willing to help you out. I'm willing to help the situation out. I'm willing to help us out as a couple and not go into the situation thinking, I'm just relieved of all my financial responsibility because he's going to cover it. I don't think that's realistic. Yeah, though you are right, though you do have to have a balance. You do have to. You want to talk about credit. You do want to talk about finances, uh, etc. You know. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Miss Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, again, this is not. This is not to tell women what to do. Tell men what to do. This is just us talking from educational, life, and common sense. Combining that and and having the hard conversation. And I think that. These conversations are definitely needed. And the feedback is definitely needed. So I appreciate it, whether agree or disagree, I appreciate everybody's time and, and, and effort in reference to um, this live. Yeah, but like, let's go back to far traditional time and like what else you want to put in as far as uh, how it was back then or how it is today. Well, I mean, we, we covered we covered a lot, but I think the one thing that we didn't cover, you gotta understand that. Having sex back in the day, um, it was something that was the ultimate prize. Having sex back in the day was the ultimate, like, you know, you heard about it. If you did it, it was like, oh, man, wonderful. Wow. You know, it was all of the stars. It was all of the big bang and, and the lights and, and all of the glamour and glit. But today... Saying that you had sex with somebody, it's like it's 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 like drinking water. It's natural. It's natural. No one's shocked. No one's like, "Wow, for real." No, no it, it's not. It's not sacred. It's not sacred. There's nothing precious about it. It's a regular, everyday occurrence. And the issue is that you lose your value when you don't appreciate when someone gives you themselves, when someone gives you that time and takes it to that particular, you know what I'm saying, encounter. We've lost that value. We've lost that intimacy. We've lost the nurturing and saying, you know what, this is something special. A lot of people don't feel like it's something special. They feel like it's, it's just a regular thing. It's a check the block. I meet her or I meet him, we had sex, I called him, I called her a couple times, it didn't work out, on to the next one. That's that's I'm, that's how it lays out. That's how it lays out. I mean, sex is, she said, Sonia said, sex is still sacred to me. You know, to me, to me, it will too. You know, I feel like everybody should be valuing their own self. Um, but also, like, back then, you know, a lot of men, we, we value, you know, husbands, you know, being husbands, you know, you know, I don't feel like a lot of men we really want to settle down and uh, be husband. What's your take on that, too? Um, JC, um, this might be the first time I agree with you tonight, brother. Um, I don't think that uh, today's society values husbands. Today's society doesn't promote being a husband. In a family unit, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it don't promote family. It don't promote family. It doesn't promote building with the black woman. It might promote building with a, a, a another woman of another nationality, another race, but it doesn't promote me building with a black woman. It doesn't. No one gives a damn if Mario says, well, you know what? I have children and I decide that, you know, I want to I want to settle down. I want to get married. I want to move forward with this black woman and, and build. That's not going to be publicized. Hell no, but if I go out there and get someone of a different race, 
a different nationality, they're going to say, hey, that retired veteran, you know, decided to marry X, Y, and Z and go over here, live in Wisconsin or Tennessee, that you will hear about that before you hear about this man being with a black woman and doing, you know, promoting family. Today's society, if you think about the number one shows, ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask y'all something real quick. Think about right now, what five shows do you have right now that promotes black unity, black family, empowerment of black people, five shows right now. I'm not going to say nothing else. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Let's, let's just, 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 just 30 seconds. I want somebody to name five, 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 five shows that promotes black empowerment, raising a family on a positive foundation with the mother and the father. I will send you $50. If you can name five shows and, and, and we can get some likes on that, I'll send you $5. I mean, $50 right now through your cash app. Somebody said blackish. That's one. I need four more. I need four more. Uh, I need four about, more. What about Black Lightning? Did you say Black Lightning? Oh my God. <laughs> you know what, JC? Go, JC, go to the house. Go, go yeah, house. I like, yeah, I like Black Lightning. Yeah, I like that. This black dude lightning. said Black Lightning. <laughs> no, no, not 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 past shows. We talking about current stuff. Somebody said um, Prince Bel Air. I don't even watch TV like that. Ti and Tiny, what? The <laughs> Good times. We we uh, no 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 no. I can name past shows. I'm talking about right now, right now, in the 20th century. Dear white people, it's, it's, it's okay. Only one, my Bible. I haven't seen my Bible. JC Sleepy. Yeah, I think he is sleepy. I think his ass is sleepy talking about. We talking about new episodes right now for this generation, for those, our children, right? Our little sisters and brothers, right? Can go see and say, what? Hey, hey, that's that promoting black families. This shows me how to date a black woman, how to approach a black woman, how to speak and communicate with a black woman, how to be a father, how to be a better woman, how to be a mother. What shows that, that those are the shows that I'm looking for right now. And I know it's difficult, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm telling you right now, very few exist. So if we're not smart enough to teach our colleagues, to teach our little sisters and brothers, to teach the people that's above us in any type of way, whether it's a supervisor or whether it's a preacher, whatever, if we're not smart enough to do the research and learn these things and teach, guess what happens? The cycle repeats itself. Oh, wow. Marvin says something very pertinent. It says, we barely have one. You are exactly right. I said name five. We barely have one. If that doesn't say what social media and what, what, what mass media promotes, they, if I said name five Ratchet TV shows, I guarantee we have five of those. Five shows that, that, that put black women in a bad light. Five shows that put black men in a bad light. Five shows that show black people getting arrested or acting ratchet on a, on a daily basis. I guarantee we all could name one. How about five song five songs that degrade black women? Five songs that say that black men that can only be rappers, NBA football players, or or some type of low budget movie star, or maybe a comedian. Where about the shows about black men being doctors and lawyers and astronauts? Huh? Father figures and role models. Maybe I'm just, I'm, I might be, I don't, maybe because my cable, I, I got a lot of channels, but I, maybe I don't got those channels. I mean, I, it's out, channels. I mean, it's out there. It's just not going to be promoted. That's all. We always tend to look at the negatives as opposed, as opposed to the positive. But just like saying, as far as um, black fathers not being in the homes, I mean, there's a lot of good fathers out there, but. You know, it's just a, the black father, they get more of the media hype, you know? I understand, ladies, that sometimes it is very difficult to 
uh, treat men with the utmost respect because you don't get that reciprocated back to you. I get it. Fellas, I understand that it's difficult to treat women with the utmost respect because a lot of women do not know their worth. These things are being projected and personified by society by saying, we only want women that are half naked, uneducated, loud and ratchet. Ladies, it is being personified and projected that you only want men that drive Bentleys, that are rappers, that are some type of sports players, or that project themselves in reference to spending a lot of money. These are the things that are being put out into the air. They do all these things but can't read out loud. They do all these things but they can't communicate. They do all these things, but they don't do anything to promote you in your relationship. I get the confusion. I but get why, it. But, I understand it. But Mari, but why, are you, why are you relying on a white media to promote black love? Why are you promoting our oppressors to show us the good sides of black love or black community? Why are you relying on Why, that? why is who? Like the media. Like why, why is who? First, first of all, stop the bullshit. Why, why am I doing that? Or why, no, not, or why is all of the mainstream general. media yeah. Yeah. produced by white people? Yeah. Who don't watch NBC? Who don't watch C CNN? I was just, I was making an example. No, no, no. I I'm making an example too. The mainstream media is produced or ran by white people. I know I ain't the only one that, that 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 went to and did a, some type of book report or research or something. Like seriously, like JC, come on, brother. Most of the most of the media is produced and ran by white media. So with that being said, it's like okay, we're gonna promote what we feel is best to promote our agenda, and the agenda is that black people are not equal to everyone else. Well, like I said, but it's not for us as men to set the standard that we can love. When we can stay faithful, we can stay married. You don't have to sit out there and cheat or go out there and rob or have to feel like we have to play basketball or football to make it. It's, not, it's on us, our shoulders to to make the narrative a lot different, you know? JC, the, 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 here's the problem. The problem is that most people watching this live right now, they won't share it, right? Hmm. Second of all, they'll say something bad about it before they say something good about it. That's two. Three. After we say good night, sayonara, right? Then people will forget the words that you just said. Mainstream media has found a way to attract attention of not only this generation, but the generation that follows. Men wearing tight ass jeans, men wearing dresses, men speaking not like men, women totally half naked and calling that sexy, calling that attractive, calling that, oh, well, I'm grown so I can do what I need to do or what I want to do. Society has promoted this projection of, well, if everyone's savages and everyone's dons and divas and bad bitches and all this other stuff, where are the men and women? Where are those titles at? Where are the kings and queens? Where are they at? If we give our generation something to strive to, that's why I said it's so difficult for young people to grow up and say, okay, I'm looking at my mom and dad because their mom and dad is not being promoted. No one's saying, look to your parents as role models. Everyone's saying, look to the radio, look to TV, look to anybody that's singing and rapping and dancing Look to those people as role models. Somebody talk to me, bro. No, I was just saying, you don't have to, you should have to be, I don't know why you're looking at basketball players or NBA players just as a role models, you know, because they have their own flaws too. They have their own issues too, you know. One thing about it is that they're making a lot more, but they still have issues like the next person. You don't ever know what they're going through on the inside. You know, because you see a lot of um, Players or even celebrities committing suicide. So just because you look good on the outside doesn't mean it's all everything green on the inside. You know, you may not. It may look good on the outside. It may got the car, the house, but it may not be something you really want to have in your possession. 
Yolanda, let me address in Yolanda real quick. Yolanda says you choose to watch and listen to those things. If you were around me, Yolanda, you would know. Let me tell you something. We can control the narrative when it comes to our household. We may be even able to control the narrative when it comes to the friends that we're around. But here's the thing. Society has a way of influencing your children when you're not around, parents. Big sisters, big brothers, they have a way of influencing your children. If you don't think that society has gotten a hold of your children, your little brothers, your little sisters, someone that is of the next generation, the millennials, they have, they have, whether it was Walmart, when Dixie, Waffle House, they have seen something that says, I'm now attracted to what was saying. I'm now focusing on what was saying. You have to make sure that you are consistent with your positivity. JC, what you think, man? No, I'm just saying, you're the one that's, like I said, like uh, Ms. Watt said, I don't agree with all what you supposed to kiss to. You're the one that's putting the, the music up. You can turn on, you have to listen to Lil Wayne, you have to listen to Two Chain, etc. You can listen to gospel, you can listen to jazz music. But you're the one that's conditioning your mindset to what you want, to, want the media to portray, you know? Um, I guess I'm kind of lost on what the what who are you addressing right now? I just say, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, generally speaking, like we're the one that's promoting, we're the one that's watching the type of movies, the type of TV show, listening to the type of music. Like we don't have to listen to the type of music, we have to, you know, be drawn into those type of um, movies, etc. Miss Davis, you are exactly right. All children are not being supervised anyway. There are too many absent parents. Look at the suicide numbers for children and teens. Thank you very much. You as a parent, you as a role model, you as a big brother or a sister, can't be everywhere at all times. That's why I said, if those people are subjected to listening to mass media, we're talking newspapers, we're talking radio, we're talking television, we're talking anything that may be of influence, those things of influence do not promote the building of the black community, black relationships. They do not. If anything, it says, this is how you, res you disrespect a black woman. This is how you downgrade a black man. You guys bash each other, and I'm going to promote that on mass media. And here's what we do. What we do is we rally behind it. All the men get on one side. All the women get on one side. Some men get in the middle and say, well, hey, I'm on this side then. You know, it all depends on who you are and what you're about. That's why I said we have to be careful about what our children are doing. And hopefully our, our next generation, they use common sense. Forget institutional knowledge. Common sense is the barrier between life experience and institutional knowledge. Common fucking sense. Somebody talk to me. <laughs> Such I said, um, we're not teaching our children father loss, period. Michelle, <laughs> you said- Why you keep laughing, my... JC? <laughs> no, nah, Michelle said, I don't tune in to men talking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, let me scroll up. I'm, you know, I can't even find that, but we good. Go ahead, keep going. Oh no, we good. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're talking nonsense. I think that, I, I think that what we're talking about is gonna, it's gonna, it's going to strike a nerve or, or, or pinch somebody and say, okay, well, I didn't see it like that, but okay, you know what I mean? I mean, hey, you hey, hey, Bridget, you got to be respectful to the guests, okay? I don't, I don't play the disrespect. Okay, I, I don't I don't know why Bridget would even make that comment, but that's that's interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't get that either. Let's let's have let's be respectful, y'all. Okay, I I don't even feel like I needed to defend myself against that comment because I, I'm sure I'm de I'm definitely sure that if me and Bridget was to do a one on one, I'm I'm sure I can uh, annihilate any 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 comments in reference to her talking about a fool. So we we. 
We can keep on moving forward, though. We can keep moving forward. Okay, Jesus is the only good role model that's ever walked this earth. Mm. I agree with that, but not everybody's religious, though. I mean, you can't really force your religion on other people, though, you know. Miss Davis is back again. Listen, y'all, brothers, ignore the negativity. Someone just coming in bashing their opinions on a few sentences is not very smart anyways. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you very that, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Here's the issue. The issue is let's let's build off of that. Because I like to use that energy and, and and redirect it. Here's the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if you just tuning in right now, we're talking about why people feel like traditional in traditional times was were better than now in reference to dating and family and all that other stuff. So we're breaking down the narrative in reference to why we feel like it may have been better. And we've explained those things uh, to a great detail. So if you're just coming in right now, you haven't you haven't heard the whole segment. I would say, hey, stop this, wait till it's over, and then listen to the whole thing. However, let me explain something about me. Very educated, brother, right? Twenty year veteran, warrant officer, CW two. I am definitely not sitting on here spewing out any hatred or any any disrespect to anybody. This is all about sharing my life experiences, my education, and also my common sense. I've been in foster homes, group homes, juvenile detention centers. I've also been in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I've led over a thousand soldiers. A thousand soldiers. I want to really say over two to three thousand, but let's keep this simple so everybody can understand. So I'm not spewing out anything that I don't know or I haven't had a privy of knowing. So if it don't work for you, then cool. But this is just my thought process on the situation. So Miss Bridget, God bless. I appreciate your comments. But in reference to the disrespect or being a fool, I am not one. Sorry. JC, go ahead, brother. No, I just want just want to say, everybody, let's be respectful to anybody that comes on to the platform. Let them have respect. I may agree with them, disagree, but it needs to be level of respect. You know, nobody needs to feel degraded. Uh, anybody come on, I appreciate it. everybody to come on, the guests, anybody. But anyways, one thing I did value is that people that do say they've been together for 30, 40, 50 years, it's kind of hard to have that type of stickability. That's one thing I do appreciate about, you know, back in the day, when you hear couple that's in their 90s or so, you know, I met my husband, I was 20, 30 years old, we've been together ever since. So I do appreciate the couples that have been that longevity um, of 40, 50 plus years. So I do appreciate the couples that have been married for that long. And what's your take on that? I think that's that's a good point. The, the fact of the matter is, is does everyone have access to couples that have been in a relationship for over 10, 20 years? So that way they can really value and understand, listen, everything wasn't easy. We've been through some rocky times, but we were able to get through that. You ever been with somebody so long or you, you, you've been around someone so long that it's like, I already know what they're going to do. I already know what they're going to say. I already know what their facial expressions are going to be. And I think that once you're in a relationship for so long, things just say, you know what, I really know this person. And, and, and the thing about it is I'm saying that society does not promote us getting to know people in reference to longevity. Society says you only have a few seconds to make this happen. We're going to live for the night like it's not going to be a tomorrow. So we're going to do everything right now. Right? You may spew out some things Memorial. about your kids. You may spew out some things about, you know, your sexual preferences. You may spew out some things about your life story, but All we're right. going to do everything in this instant second. Talk to me, bro. No, I mean, I just wanted, I just wanted to say, you know, like I said, you keep talking about society doesn't promote it, but you need to have a mindset that forget about what the Joneses are doing outside the building. I'll make sure that we're going to do what's best for our couple, our, our situation, regardless of how the media looks. We're going to make sure that I set a foundation that, you know, that able to us to follow, you know, pursue. Not just about what the Jonas is doing. I'm not worried about what everybody else is doing. I'm worried about my household and what I'm trying to do for you, you know. Miss Davis, James, uh James and and, and I believe that's Miss Watts. I see y'all comments or whatever. I'm gonna try to read these things real quick or whatever, because I know JC's gonna read a couple. Um she says, um, 
this is why I love y'all. Sorry, but I have to address this and applaud the maturity. Mario have commented you so far for commended you so far for staying a gentleman when it would have been so easy to go left. I appreciate that. Um, Miss Jane, uh, I think it's Mr. Jane. Uh, people base love off of movies. Definitely. Definitely. That's a part of the media. Um, I believe it's Miss Watts. Miss Watts says, I was married for 27 amazing years. That is some that is someone that should definitely, you guys, in reference to having being in a relationship. That is definitely probably somebody y'all can sit down and have a conversation with that can definitely teach y'all a lot in reference to her experiences. So I, I definitely would say friend request her in 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 the in the quickest form format or whatever. Yeah, but like I also wanted to say, like a lot of times you just see a lot of I feel like if are you viewing like how a family family structure is supposed to be made, I feel like you can have a better example back then as opposed to right now when you see a lot of dysfunction, you know, and I feel like like then you can actually learn how to take care of home, take care of the household, et cetera. Nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. you do have some women that don't want to know how to cook or think, you know, doing a, a hot pocket will do. And I don't know how to like really prepare the home like grandmother used to do, you know. So, you know, I do like to, I do want to pin, I do want to pinpoint that out too, you know. Just having that, that just having that awareness of how to accept the home set the mood, et cetera. And a lot of not a lot of women know how to do that, especially my 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 generation don't know how to do do that, you know. Let, let's read this. Yolanda says, I've been in a relationship for 30 years and if my husband went dead broke and couldn't perform sexually, I well, I guess it's I I'm not going anywhere. First of all, salute to you. That is definitely something that's rare and it's definitely something that's was instilled in you throughout your time, your, your tenature in life, and say that you need to be there, support, encourage, and, and be steadfast. So definitely salute to you. That That's dope. Well, yeah, you got anything else to say? Anything else you want to add? Hey, man, you know what? Um, I think I think learning from our past mistakes or learning history or knowing history definitely influences us in the present. And when you're influenced in the present, that means you're influenced intellectually to say, we're not going to repeat the same mistakes. However, it's not always about mistakes. Some things that happened before our tenature, before our time, is worth repeating. Getting to know people is worth repeating. Having respect for people is worth repeating. Um, taking the time and not rushing in and actually taking the time to get, get to know people and know what they're about and what they bring to the table and what their likes and dislikes are is worth repeating. So with that being said, I'm hoping that everyone that listens to the live, they get something from it. They share it, they comment, they check Mr. JC out on YouTube, everyday thoughts. If they, they happen to get some extra time, check Mr. KTU 101 out on um, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Um, JC, it's always a pleasure to be here, brother. Uh, until next time, bro, be safe, man. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, sorry about the inconvenience, you know. You know oh, we anyway. good, bro. We good. That don't shake me, man. If I rat couldn't break me, this can't shake me. I'm a holler. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you joining me. And uh, y'all can say you have a blessed night. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, like I said, anybody that want to join me for a lot of discussion, let me know. And uh, we, I, I'll, I'll set it up. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Everybody, have a blessed night. Be safe. Peace.